Alrighty, guys. So we're going to add um, to and fill out our first set of notes in our new chapter. So we hopefully put all of these in already in our notebook for chapter four, congruent triangles chapter. And um, the first thing that we're going to add in our table of contents is the shortcuts that we found in our Desmos activity. So proving triangle congruent shortcuts is going to be on page 38. Okay, so that's right next to this one. And one of the shortcuts that we found um, was that if I knew the three sides of one triangle were congruent to three sides of another, then I had enough information to know for sure that the triangles will always, always be congruent. So that is our first triangle congruence theorem. Um, so it says right here, if three, tri uh, three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. Now, a thing that I'm going to stress a lot in this chapter is that you need to mark your picture with tick marks or rainbows. And so to show that three sides are congruent, I would need to see on my picture that one side was congruent to one, um, a second was congruent to a second, and then a third was congruent to a third. And if I saw that in my picture, then that would be enough for me to say that triangle ABC is congruent to, and here's where we have to make uh, sure that our congruent statement matches up appropriately. So since I've traveled from A to B to C, so I went across one and then three and then finished, I need to do the same thing here. So D to E to F. Now, another one of the ones that we found that was a shortcut, I only needed to know three things about the triangle. Um, if I had two sides and then the angle in between, if I knew that those things were congruent on two sets of triangles, then I would have enough to know that the entire triangle itself was congruent. So that is our theorem here, our side angle side theorem. And again, I'm going to stress that we mark this stuff in our picture. So what we would see in our picture is that one side was congruent to another. And then we had a second side congruent. And then the third thing has to be an angle. And that angle has to be the one that's in between those two sides. So kind of like where those two sides come together, I would need to know that angle A was congruent to angle D. And if that were the case, if this was what I saw in my picture, if this was what I was able to mark, then I would have enough information to say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF by side angle side his side angle side. Okay. Another shortcut that we found was our angle side angle theorem. So it's almost the inverse of this one where instead of knowing two sides one angle, I know two angles and specifically the side in between them. So again, marking up my picture is super important here. Um, let's say for instance, I knew that, um, these two sides, so AC was congruent to DF, if that were the case, I would have to know the two angles like on either ends of that side. So like I would need to know that A was congruent to D and then that C was congruent to F. If that wasn't the case, I might have a different shortcut, but like to use angle side angle, I have to have the two angles surrounding that side to call it the angle side angle theorem. And just for a little practice here, let's say instead of naming ABC, um, we call it triangle cab. If I call it that, then I have to be careful about how I call the next one. So since I went from C to A to B, um, so I started at the pink angle and traveled across the side that I know and then finally finished. I'd have to do the same thing here. So I'd have to start at the pink angle, travel across, and then end at E. So FDE. 
So it doesn't matter how I write it, but I do have to be consistent in both statements. Now the next one has a little bit of a goof up. It is another one of our shortcuts is angle, angle, side, but down here I goofed it up. Oops. Me. Angle. <laughs> Angle, angle, side. And this one is different. I still do know two angles and a side, like that last one, but their arrangement is different. So while these ones have the angles around the side, this one does not. So if two angles and a non-included side. So again, if I think about my picture here, um, you know, if I knew that this side BC, it was congruent to EF, and then I had um, C congruent to F. If I knew that B and E were congruent, I'd be using angle side angle because that would be around this side. Instead, to use angle angle side, I would actually need to know that A is congruent to D because the side is not included here. It's kind of like outside of it. And I could also use angle angle side if I still knew these two angles, but instead knew that side AB and DE were congruent. So it just has to be the one not in between your two angles. And so again, to kind of change it up a little bit, if I called the first triangle BCA, I went from B to C to A. I would have to do the same thing on the other one. So that would be triangle EFD. Now this one here, we're gonna come back to later. This is another shortcut, but we're gonna look at this more um, once we get towards the end of the chapter. It'll be a good review for us to come back to this stuff. Um, so we're gonna skip this square for now, but finally, we had two others, actually a couple others that were not shortcuts. Like if I just had one angle or one side, wasn't enough information. If I only had two things, like if I only know about two angles, two sides, or an angle and a side, that wasn't enough information. I always have to have three things. That's like the least amount. But um, angle, angle, angle did not work. So our shortcut, angle, 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 didn't work. They were not congruent. However, they are similar um, because when we talked about congruent versus similar, um, they're the same shape. One is just big and the other is small or vice versa. So angle, angle, angle is just not enough to know for sure that the triangles are going to be the exact same size, but they will be kind of like proportional. And we'll talk about that more later. The other one that was not enough information <laughs> is the fun one. Ass. It's ass. I don't want to say it too loud in case your parents are listening. Um, normally we don't write it this way because naughty, naughty. Um, but I mean, I don't care if you do. Um, but they are not congruent. It's not enough information. They're also not similar. And basically it's because um, this side that's connected to the other side here can kind of go willy nilly. And so you can actually create two triangles always. So you can't know for sure which one you have. So this always uh, creates two different triangles, um, meaning that, I mean, it could create the same one. Like if I have one and you have one, we might make the same one, but we might make different ones. And so because I can't always make the same one as you, I can't use that as a shortcut. You might make the other one. So that's kind of what that means. It always creates two different triangles. Like I could create the same ones, but I shouldn't bank on it. Like you might make the other one and then we wouldn't be the same. So anyways, guys, these are good things to have written down and like marked up. We are going to practice a ton of proofs using these theorems here. And we're going to kind of go through the next few pages and do that together in class a lot. So yeah, good luck. All right. I'll see you next time. Bye.